I will start, if I may, by thanking very much His Highness, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, not only for inviting me to speak here today, but for the extraordinarily warm welcome that I've had from Abu Dhabi, not for the first time, I might add, but for about the fourth or fifth. The only problem was I looked out of my bedroom window today and I discovered that I'd brought the English weather with me. You, I'm sure, were all delighted. I was deeply depressed. But Your Highnesses, Minister al Jaba, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I do thank you for this invitation, but when considering Mastar, which I will, if I moment, dwell upon, and the UAE's ambition, I would like to share my thoughts on the parallels of my own business interests, the global challenges we are facing, and examples of the long-term approach I sincerely encourage. Whilst considering Mazda as a concept, as a dream, which will soon be a reality, a number of phrases come to my mind. The first and most important is long-term visionary leadership. And there is no doubt that His Highness Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and indeed his ministers have shown that extraordinary visionary leadership which is so vital in a project of this time. It has shown commitment, commitment to the people of Abu Dhabi, commitment to the worldwide problem of global warming. It shows ambition. Ambition is a great thing to have. It shows courage, because without ambition, courage is nothing. And without courage, nothing, ambition is nothing. But above all, it shows innovation. And I do, at this point, would like to congratulate the UAE for hosting Expo 2020. And I am sure that what I see from my end of the telescope, that UAE will put on not only a great show, but it will demonstrate to the world that it has come of age. For those of you not familiar with my family, and many of you will not be, I am chairman of the trustees of the Grosvenor Estate, which includes all my family's business interests, the International Property Group, which has operating businesses all over the world, in the UK, North America, the Asia-Pacific region, South America, an indirect portfolio in complementary sectors and geographies, and a fund management business that operates across Europe, the US, and Asia. We chief investments, my own particular little baby, which operates the sustainability of food security and energy supplies and the family office which includes the management of the family's rural estates. So the built environment, the land and forestry are my th main three interests. We came to the United Kingdom a thousand years ago in 1066, and as an unbroken line, I stand here a thousand years later, still speaking as a member of that original family. We have moved house 300 meters in a thousand years because the river decided to flood. We have endured 240 major wars and 168 stock market crashes. And if that's not sustainability, nothing is, ladies and gentlemen. But sustainability to me is synonymous with long-term stewardship, a belief that I hold very dear, that we must preserve what we have for the next generation, 
to be stewards of the planet and to pass down a world which is a better place than the one that we received. I am particularly proud of the stewardship which the Grosvenor family has demonstrated for generations, both on our rural estates and our urban property portfolio, originally in London over some 300 years and now also internationally. We are a guest of Mazda, a city which aims to offer the highest quality of life and the lowest environmental impact, and which is setting an international exemplar for new sustainable methods of development, built with wealth derived from natural resources. The link to my own family, which has a history of nearly, as I say, a thousand years in the UK, may not be immediately apparent but Mazda represents the UAE's tremendous transformation from an economy based on resources to one based upon knowledge, expertise, and technological innovation. The Grosvenor business has evolved over generations and continues to do so. Similarly, the original wealth was created, in my case, in resources. In our case, the mining of lead and minerals. But some 300 years ago, my predecessors diversified into property, building the areas of London now known as Mayfair, Belgravia, and Pimlico. Like Mazda, this was a master plan and for a new part of the city and built with the wealth of natural resources. And like Mazda, it was an ambitious project of its time and it is still revered as such. Visually, it has changed very little since it was built. The high quality materials and design integrity have been retained despite the Second World War trying to bomb it flat. The architecture and the public realm, the spaces between the buildings, are world-renowned. And I remain the owner and steward of that estate. By having a bold vision and taking long-term decisions from the outset, rather than seeking to maximize short-term profit my predecessor succeeded in creating what has become, over time, some of the most valuable real estate in the world. This is a different mindset to much of the short-termism that we see today and involves investing for the future by consciously thinking about the future generations and demonstrating real and positive leadership. Mazda is an exciting example of leadership from which the rest of the world will learn. I hope that it will stay true to its vision and similarly thrive for many generations. And in my travels, I have seen so many cities that have tried to live up to the fine ideals that Mazda are expounding today, and they have singularly failed to do so. But something in my waters, as the English say, give me that feeling that there is a determination of leadership, there is a determination of people and a great ambition to see Mazda succeed. Of course, solutions need to be adaptable to the context which we are responding to is constantly changing. We are acutely aware of this and are evolving our own business to meet the changing global context, which I hardly need remind this audience is incredibly challenging. 
I am no scientist. I am no politician. I am no expert. I am, however, a practitioner who has to absorb the message of politics, the message of science, and the message of experts, and try and build and create not only living cities, but sustainable rural areas out of sometimes those conflicting messages that I, as the practitioner, get. To say it is deeply confusing on occasions is an understatement of some British um, resource. But the global context of particular challenge will be meeting the needs of any exponentially growing world population forecast to be 9.5 billion in 2050, many more of whom will be in our cities, likely to be almost double the number today. But that is only part of the problem. And this more urban lifestyle will become a change in consumer demand. A further three billion middle-class consumers will emerge from our cities over the next 40 years. Their preference for a more Western style of living will intensify competition for our natural resources, in particular land, water, and energy. Social unrest will be an inevitable consequence if these tensions are ignored, this question of finite global resources and trying to do more with less is one which unites us all in our businesses. So how can we create cities which, are not only, which are not only meet the basic needs of its citizens, but operate successfully at a much higher densities where people want to live and work, which endanger a sense of community and civic pride. In these challenges, we see huge opportunities. We have particular interest in cities. Within the property group, we have 12 billion assets under management in over 50 cities around the world. It is clear from the figures of global population and urban migration, that cities are where many of these issues will play out. To understand how cities will perform in the future and where to allocate our capital internationally, we recently undertook, we recently undertook research report which ranks the 50 global cities on environmental and social resilience. We have been considering what a sustainable city of the future will look like and how they will function. We aim to create places of high quality which support human social inter interaction and use resources responsibly. We call this our living cities philosophy. This philosophy considers all elements of a successful city from sustainable resources to strong community and climate resilience. Our legacy will be the measure of our success in being effective city stewards and creating long-term value for all our stakeholders. I have just picked out very briefly a couple of case studies which gives you a flavor of what we are endeavoring to do. Our United Kingdom team has commenced a 10-year retrofishing program for our historic London estate. This program of investment aims to reduce the carbon consumption of all our properties by 50% by 2023, surpassing UK legislative requirements and the UK's long-term carbon reduction targets, despite the constraints of conservation areas and heritage listings. 
This will future proof our estate against potentially rising energy prices and create healthier, quieter and warmer homes for our occupiers. Another case study in Liverpool, in the north of England, one of our old industrial heartlands, in a 42-acre urban regeneration scheme in Liverpool, we launched in 2008, provided 30 new buildings with 155 shops, over 500 apartments, two hotels, restaurants, a five-acre park, and a public transport interchange. This is an inherently sustainable project which transformed a brownfield site that in places had not been redeveloped since World War II in an, into an exciting city center, building on existing transport node and infrastructure, again doing more with less. Most significant of all, this development is a series of buildings in the city, not an air conditioning shopping center, and has won many design awards. My next case is in Vancouver, called The Rise. It's a wonderful example of successful density. It won the Global Urban Land Institute Award for an exemplary example of a new model of transit-orientated mixed-use inner-city development. The innovative urban infill building has succeeded in creating residential and a substantial open area at third floor level over large retail units, all in downtown locations in Vancouver, British Columbia. Truly, that site is more with less. And I now turn to Wheat Chief, my little baby I take out of my pocket and rub every now and again. But we have, we have detected growing prosperity will continue to create tensions with our natural environment. And trying to ensure that we can produce enough energy and food for our cities to survive is a challenge that we must all face in building the future. It is one of the key challenges. It is a challenge that where I believe human ingenuity will solve the problem. In particular, there is a tremendous opportunity of businesses to show leadership in finding solutions so long as they are prepared to take the long-term view and indeed take risk. This is why we established WeChief as another business within the Grosvenor Group to invest and grow in commercial activities that drive sustainability in food and energy supply chains. Sustainability to WeChief means helping the agricultural and energy industries to optimize the resources they use and produce more with less. Grosvenor Farms is my first case study. I am particularly passionate about agriculture and the crucial role it plays in feeding the world, protecting the natural environment and sustaining rural communities. During my time, I am proud that Grosvenor has built two successful agricultural businesses that now employ over 250 people at our family estate in Chester in the northwest of England. Our dairy and arable businesses is one of the largest and most efficient producers of milk in the United Kingdom. 40, 40 million liters a day go into the Tesco supermarkets. And recently completed construction of a new state-of-the-art milking parlor, which I am particularly proud of. where all aspects of its design have been considered, the cow's well-being and brought the best ideas together from around the world. After only a month in operation, 
I am pleased to say that the parlor is already achieving an improvement in milk yield, a demonstration that sustainable intensification of livestock farming begins with animal welfare and that best-in-class solutions rely on open knowledge sharing. The second one is cogent. Our farm almost also uses some of the best bovine genetics available, supplied by cogent breeding. A bull stud of some 400 bulls that Grosvenor founded 20 years ago to identify and breed dairy animals with highest productivity and welfare traits in order to drive overall efficiency. In the herd, Cogent exports high-quality bovine genetics around the world, as well as being a pioneer in the development of reproductive technologies, such as sex semen, that deliver real value to the farmer. And our recent investments. We chief ambitions stretch far wider than the dairy farms of Cheshire, however. We have deployed capital in a number of new sectors to support other enterprises that are bringing new innovations to the food chain. I want to briefly highlight three of these investments. Firstly, there is Ostara, a business that recovers phosphorus from municipal waste water and converts it into an environmentally friendly and more efficient fertilizer. Limiting our waste of phosphorus is desperately important. It is an essential nutrient for life. Yet our natural resource are relatively close to being depleted. Secondly is Bullwrap. It is a logistics company that is commercializing a technology to extend the shelf life of fresh meat and fish on the basis that 34% of every single item in the supermarkets in the UK per day go get thrown out as a result of not being consumed or not being sold. This process is an, a, a, a step forward and it will decarbonize fresh protein distribution by enabling transport by ocean rather than by air. Thirdly, Entira is an insect farming business that harvests fly larva fed upon organic food waste not fit for human consumption and processes it into a potential meal for livestock. This insect feed has the potential to replace other unsustainable feed ingredients, such as fish meal. I have to say I look forward to seeing my flies turning themselves into protein. And looking to the next six months, we are evaluating opportunities to invest in aquaculture and animal and nutritional businesses and innovations that include building products company that has patented a form of cement that is carbon free. A farm software data company and a startup business that will take established human health technologies into the agricultural sector. While this way appear to be a broad list of businesses in different sectors, we see strong overlaps between their technologies and capabilities Success for We Chief will be seeing these businesses grow to deliver real change in how we use our resources in a sustainable fashion in the future. And in part, this will be reliant upon bringing different talents and technologies together around the central challenge in order to foster new approaches. For all of us, to be a part of this future, we must be prepared to adapt, to use new models and try new ideas, show real leadership, something which both Mazda and ourselves are seeking to do. Thank you very much.